again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. Ah, uh, we have no plans for today, so today um, feel I well. Was, Tammy I'm has lots of stuff. Notes. I don't know if it's anything. So I was reading this article just br briefly before I came about um, in today's Union Leader about population shift poses challenges to economy. So this is about how um, the growth rate for kiddos is in the is, is declining. Right. Our population is not growing because people are having children. New Hampshire's population is growing because people are moving here, but it's generally tending to make uh, New Hampshire's population older. Now, keep in mind that the median age is 43.4, which is the second oldest in the nation. Um, two for, were tied with Vermont. So okay. all the old people want to live in Vermont and New Hampshire, apparently. And okay. Um, but it's interesting because they talk about, in the article, about how, like, how's this going to work? Because who's going to pay if you have older people who are, um, you know, they're not going to want to be paying for education so much. So then I got to thinking, and I'm like, right, because everybody keeps forgetting that we need to just fix the way we fund education. So if if taxpayers weren't on the dole for twenty some thousand dollars a student well also if they weren't actually on the hook for their lifetime right so we have this notion so you get taxed in new hampshire on your property and that most of that money at least fifty percent mm -hmm. of that money in manchester at least goes to funding the schools so if we weren't all funding the schools all of the time and perhaps you only funded the schools when your kids were in school. Or at least or a larger portion. I mean, I've always said it. Prorated. Wouldn't it, right. Wouldn't it be nice if like, okay, so 20000 as a nice round number. $20,000 per student. And right now, all of that money comes from the taxpayers, whether it comes from federal, you know. So what if the taxpayers paid half and the parent paid half? Right. Right, while their kids were in school. so that while Right, but I actually think if we parsed out the numbers, it would be cheaper would for be. everyone right. if you just paid if your kids are well, in school. Well, and, and, so, like, and, and then there could be private charities to fill the gaps. You know, we've got the statewide, we've got statewide education funding, and that's what education freedom accounts, how they work. They take that guesstimate, you know, estimate of six grand a student, and it follows the child instead of following, you know, the building. So if we started looking at that model and saying, okay, you know, that number would naturally, uh, in my opinion, go up. So maybe it goes up to $8,000 per student statewide, right? But so, question, sorry to interrupt, no, no. but like, so it, let's say it's 8,000 per child. So you don't think you could get private tutors who would take 10 students a year right. for $80,000, right. and maybe your kid would be able to read and write again, right. probably speak Latin. I, I don't know why people, that would be useful. I think people but. struggle with the idea that, because right now you have basically this, you have one option with some peripheral options. The primary option for education, because we've done it so long this way, is the public school sil building, right? That is the way people, the knee-jerk reaction. Then on the outside of it, you have people who are homeschooling their kids. You have people who are sending their kids to private school. And then there's some online education. But it's like, it's just peripherals. So we keep struggling with um, how we're going to do it with that model. So maybe it's, it's not just the funding, it's the model. Can we stop thinking that because if you talk to people about education freedom accounts and, and school choice, they go, yeah, but private schools don't have to take the kids with special needs. And I'm like, okay, but but are the special kids, kid, the special needs thriving in the public school? No. So maybe over time. I mean, not, maybe you would have special needs schools. Right. You'd have a school that could act for that. Exactly. And maybe, I don't know, there would be an incentive There's no to ask where all the special need children are coming from because why are we literally breeding um, a generation of people who are well, harmed? In on some that way? note, I was listening to a whole um, podcast the other day when we were driving in the car, and it was Tucker Carlson interviewing this brother sister. They just happened to be brother sister. I, don't, I think they might have been twins. Um, and she was a doctor, a surgeon, um, who was going to school at Stanford, and she was going to be a he like a throat and head surgeon, like a real surgeon, you know. Right. And she was eight years in into her um, 
studies. her medical degree yeah. and um, to quit. Just said, I'm done. I'm not doing this. And part of, she was just talking about how totally weird some of the things that we don't think about. Like, did you know that when people go to school to be a doctor, they're not required? Pretty much every doctor degree does not require a single course in nutrition. It and will. Like, it requires, I believe it's like 30 minutes is the actual. Uh, sorry, my hair is doing something <laughs> more so than usual. I think it's like literally 30 minutes. She said you, she was not required to take a single nutrition course. If you consider, you know, in the olden days, it was sort of like food as the, as food is your medicine. Yeah. Uh, how you nourish your body is probably how yep. your body well, is going to react to things. That was what she was getting at, is that like the medical system, which is not a surprise to me, but, you know, she said the, the, the metrics of success is not how many people you've made help healthy it's how many people you've you know how many p patients you've seen in a day how many right, surgeries you've done and she was talking about the autism autism rates and the numbers i forget she was talking to like 2020 to what, like 2000 to now so we're not even talking back to the 80s so some states are higher california is significantly higher but autism rates now are one in 36 yeah. for children that is insane. Something, like she was saying, something. And, you know, whether it's diet or environmental factors or whatever it is, there are things that are causing it. It doesn't have to be one thing. It can be a bunch of things. But as long as we pretend it's nothing, right. nothing is going so, to be fixed. So you've got the school system. But that, also, just to go back to that, so the question, why isn't nutrition taught in schools? Why is actual health not taught in schools. Why during COVID did we never hear, go outside, exercise, make sure you lose weight. Are you sleeping? Do you get yeah. vitamin D? Have you yeah. been in the sun? All the things we actually know across millennia that underscore and create true health. So the reason is, dunk, 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 conspiracy theory time, is back in the early 1900s, uh, there was a strong push towards this allopathic medicine, so towards this scientism that disregarded anything that came out of the naturalist world, so out of uh, herbs or natural medicines or eating the right kind of food, and it was literally criminalized, right? I don't know if you remember, but back in the 80s, uh, there was this whole thing where they started to say, it was you weren't allowed or you were allowed to talk about supplements in a certain way because mm. supplements now didn't fall under this yeah. particular thing and then this and then this. But ultimately, over time, all that's happened is they've basically pushed anything that's natural medicine mm -hmm. to the wayside, made it kind of wackadoodle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, marginalized all the nat uh, natural paths, homeopaths, any of that. And look. There's weird stuff there too. Right. Should you be drinking colloidal silver till you turn blue? No, that seems weird too. But again, it's not this or this, but at this stage, Western medicine is kind of out here. Yeah. It is killing more people. Yeah. It's not caring. We're not medically caring for the humans. The third cause of death in America is doctor, uh, me, uh, uh, doctor mistakes. Like, it's like, it's bad. It's really wonky out there. And so this entire cry for more and more and more health care, neither of those words are in that system. Right, right. There isn't health. There isn't care. There is, and I saw this with my parents. I was just down in South Carolina. It's the Medicaid shuffle. Yes. Every doctor is just sending someone somewhere else because no one wants to solve the problem. And if they're not looking at it holistically, and across the board, meaning what are you eating? How are you exercising? Do you sleep? Uh -huh. um, you know, what's up in your life? How does your stress look? As well as blood pressure, right. uh, your blood work, like well, all of those things, then they're not gonna get the right picture. That specialist is gonna go, well, it's not your heart, bye-bye. Right. So they, one of the things, I was, it, none of this was surprising. It was just interesting to hear somebody who's like, nope, I can tell you. So she was talking about a lot of different things. And um, one of the in things she was talking about is why we, why we vaccinate babies for hepatitis C. She said, okay, so here's the thing. Um, you, intravenous drug user, 
Yeah, it's sex. a sexually she transmitted goes, disease. None of those things are babies. And she goes, and we're testing the mother for these same things. So it's not like you could even have possibly somehow transmitted it because we've already tested the mother. She goes, so where, where does this come from? Like, why? People are like, but why? And she said, so all these things, whether it's the food pyramid or whether it's all, you know, there's I all mean, sorts. Do you guys remember when they told us? Eggs were bad well, that's for what you. She, said. she goes, there's standards. There's uh, all these standards in the medical world. There is a standard at which of the standards, the guidelines that are put forth. They're not hard, fast rules. You know, they're not le like legally required, but they're the standard. So the doctor will be like, well, the standard is your baby, your child gets these vaccinations. Well, where did the standards come from? And she said, yeah, the problem is, is that a lot of these standards, the part, the entities that are contributing to making those decisions are all the wrong ones. Like Cadbury, yeah, chocolate is a one of the fa one of the entities that funds the um, the heart the standards for diabetes. Like like for, the Heart Association okay. is the worst. I mean, they literally have their 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 brand so on cereal. When you've got <laughs> right, when you've got you know, when you've got sugared, when you've got candy manufacturers chiming in on um, and that, on on health, on weight and diabetes and stuff, and you've got pharmaceutical companies. Like she said, the reality is, is medical schools, Stanford, every medical school. She goes, if you look at where their funds are coming from, they are com largely funded by pharmaceutical companies. So it should, it is not a surprise that the way it's be at med medical schools are teaching is through the pharmaceutical lens, which is not the shouldn't be the first. The first go-to in medicine shouldn't be which prescription. You know, it should be whole care. What do you? Why? Why are you sick? What is going on? You know, yes, yeah, some things are just sickness, and okay, that's fine. You know, a virus. Uh, you can get a you know an ear infection, and that there you need a prescription to you know okay. But that isn't the reason why everybody's obese. And that isn't the reason why one in 36 children is autistic. There, has, there, is, there are other factors. And, well, and of course, I mean, the other thing people don't want to talk about is there is a vast difference in these outcomes with Americans mm. and much of the rest of the world. Right. And that is partly because there are things that are legal in America to be in our food yep. that is not legal to be in our food anywhere else yeah. in the world. World. And I mean, red dye, red food dye is like really yeah. bad for you and it's banned everywhere in the world. But oh no, here we can just have our red M&Ms. Don't worry about it. And so you have to go back to that exact point where you say, you have to ask yourself, why are we doing X, Y, and Z, right? It's that old joke about the mom who has the story about how she makes the pot roast and, and the recipe that was passed down from great grandma to grandma to the daughter yeah. who's now passing it on to her daughter is, well, you get the pot roast and then you cut off the end by this much. And the daughter's like, well, why do we cut off the end of the pot roast? And the mom's like, I don't know. So they go up the food chain, and great grandma's like, because my pot was too, too big. Small. Right. It wouldn't fit. And so it's like, okay, you're so our pot got that bigger. Makes no, right. So you're doing something for no reason. So, first principles say whenever we're grappling with some hard idea or something, it's like, well, why are we doing this again? What is the source? And sadly, in American politics, if you follow the money, you start to see the truth of the story, which of course is why they are freaking out about the First Amendment again. I guess X had to close her office in Brazil. Who did? X Twitter oh. had to uh, has closed her office in Brazil. I guess they're getting sued in the UK for like they they're like if you don't take down what we deem as hate speech, we're going to, you know, shut you down. So it's, you know, it, it feels very real where you're looking at these things and you're going, oh, actually, when you let everyone actually uh, debate and 
argue about what the right ideas are, then the truth does start to bubble to the top. You right. start to get these kinds of doctors who are going on Tucker Carlson and you know bigger platforms and saying the things candidly. I'm like, yay, Elon, you're saying what I was saying 12 right. years ago. Right. Welcome aboard, you know? Uh, but the point being, this is great that these influencers are starting to come around to the notion that uh, maybe if we had more freedom and maybe if we allowed more th free thought, we would have better ideas. So you can either send your kids to one building right. because that is, I don't know, because what we, what we decided what, in 1890 right. to do, or we can go, the internet exists, your kid can learn from MIT professors yeah. who are the best in the world. And even the kids with special needs and special education and all that stuff, you know, in the in a better model would have better opportunities. Nobody's trying to segregate out the kids. It's just why why as a parent would I be more concerned about the integration of my child with a bunch of other kids who also can't read because of our terrible school system? Or would I not want my child who has some sort of special needs to have the education that can make them better best address their special needs? You know what I also have been thinking about is I wonder if some of these really dumb ideas uh, that are kind of in the middle that no one wants to touch are the ones that then suddenly become policy, right? Like I was kind of looking at all the climate change stuff mm -hmm. and I was like, how did we get here? Because all the climate stuff is based on modeling. Right. And all modeling is, is someone's opinion about what is going to happen in the future. Now, some people might call that soothsaying or fortune telling or right, tarot right. reading or, you know, Nostradamus or whoever your like soothsayer from the past was, because it's just inputs in models, right? And I was like, well, with the CO2, which is 0.4%, I think, of the gases mm. in the world, you know, people are looking at carbon dioxide, but they're not looking at um, the sun as a source of changes in temperature. I mean, that's insane, right? Like, they're picking this one little thing yep. out of the whole thing and being like, well, don't look at the sun. And then you go, how did this happen? And I was like, maybe what happens up at the government is there's sort of a dumb middle ground and then there are these outliers and people are trying to push this. And then so when everyone works towards a consensus, they embrace the dumb thing in the middle that no one's really advocating for yeah, one way or really the other. it's not really anybody's actual right, viewpoint. Thing. It just, exactly, and that's how we get like the, the extra, extra, crazy, not smart things, which then take us forever to dial back because climate change is going to be one of those things where it's going to be like, why are we cutting the, the top off the end of the pot roast? Like people are going to be like, they are obsessed with climate change right. in a way where it's like, but no one's basing any of it on anything that is actually happening in reality. Like, if you look at the studies, if you look at the stuff, yes, it got hotter. Well, the now, sun has been going Now they're nuts. also saying they can't, un they can't figure it out, but the, ocean, the Atlantic Ocean is getting colder. Well, what? you know, I... I I'm, so, wait, if it's everything's heating up, why is it cold? Like, so there's a... Right. Obviously, in my, my non-scientific opinion, there are cycles. And we've only been measuring cycles for so long. So maybe this is the normal cycle, you know, like. Right, and also things like car uh, the carbon dating on trees and yeah. on ice and whatever. I'm like, so we think it's right. Yeah, but what but, but maybe it's not, right? Like there's all this stuff where you're like, we think yeah. we know, but we don't really. And maybe we should act with a little less hubris and a little more, um, uh, what's the opposite of hum uh, humility yeah. and kind of go, there's a lot we don't know. Right. Which means we shouldn't be writing laws about them because no one's really right. Yeah. A little shout out for freedom, folks. Um. <laughs> All right, what you got? No, I'm like, there was an op-ed in the paper today and part of it, I'm like, I get it, but you know, there was a gentleman, he, he's from Bradford. Okay, I'm guessing there's no homeless people in Bradford, not a big bunch of them. Um, anyways, he's talking about uh, we should use the Sununu Center to ho house the homeless. And I'm like, mm, no. Because I look at the, that whole plot of land where the Sununu Center is. It's pr beautiful, beautiful property. I mean, if you ask me, if I get a vote, 
you sell it to developers that are going to build really nice homes. Maybe they're maybe they're middle range, you know, maybe they're Cape Cods. Maybe we go back to building moderately sized homes, but why would you take a pristine piece of land that is going to be unused and use it for like the people who can't get out of their own way? I, like he does have he's on got the right idea that like people should the homeless should be segregated mental, you know, not segregated maybe physically, but you have those who are, have the mental health issues, those with the drug and addiction issues, and those who maybe are just on a fluke homeless. And I have to say this, the on the fluke homeless people, I think they try to convince you that there's more people that fall into that category than there are because yes, rents are expensive. Yes, all these things. Mm, people don't just suddenly become homeless. There was somebody um, the other day talking about how suddenly they're, they're in, they have an emergency because they have to find some place to live because their lease is up. And I'm thinking, but that's not actually an emergency. You knew your lease was going to end. This isn't a secret. So that comes back to, you know, it's short time preference versus long time preference. And I guess some people actually really do struggle with planning. Like right. even if they know, hey, my lease is going to be up in 60 days. It's like the day of. They're, they're like, like, oh, oh I don't know. you know. And, and part of that can be a trauma response yeah. or like some kind of brain damage or, yeah, you know, yeah. PTSD, that kind of stuff. But still, we are pumping millions yeah. here in New Hampshire, yeah. millions, tens of millions, to actually probably hundreds of millions. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely tens of millions of money into this problem. Question, where is the problem going and why is it not getting less? It's just, and it, it is, it's just, it, it seems like, I feel like it, no matter what, every week when I read stuff, I'm like, it's the same, same thing. You know, people don't, people don't want to, I want, I don't want to not help people, but I'd rather help, like there's gotta be a way and you can't tell me because we have how many of these towers like the one over on south main street and then there's one over near yeah. st mary's bank and then there's one over here and those were originally supposed to be for senior housing if i'm not mistaken so you had the older people who didn't have any place else to go so you went into senior housing and you got this little apartment and now there's all sorts of people being given apartments in these buildings, which is not right, because I'm guessing that some of the people who are probably struggling with housing the most are people that are older and on fixed incomes who did not plan for what they were going to do so, at 70. So I kind of feel like this is maybe a program that, you know, folks back home can get behind. I think we have to actually break down how we are taxing our citizens and where that money is going to and how we can better spend it. Because I think if you made the argument to parents where they maybe understood, hey, you might have to pay for your child's education for 12 years because it's your child. It's your child. You chose um, to have a child. But that might mean that, hey, your parents who are aging out of their house in Greenland or wherever. Bedford or whatever don't actually have to pay half so imagine we could say to every Granite Stater, you have to pay $8,000 in property taxes a year. From next year, it's only $4,000 right. because you don't have to pay for Tammy's kids to go to school, by way of example, right? And so it's like, I think if we break down the numbers, we can actually persuade people to be like, there's a better structure because money talks and we are all getting poorer because they broke the money system. They printed too much money. We're too heavily in debt. America is the equivalent of the crackhead who is now paying credit card debts with other credit cards. I mean, it's, 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 it's gnarly out there. I, We're seeing it with the markets. Um, it's same thing. It's just funny. So I also saw that New Hampshire Journal did an article because Joyce Craig's upset because Kelly Aya is pointing out how terrible of a mayor and what terrible condition Manchester is in as a result of Joyce Craig's policies at the local level. And she's like, it's she's distorting because she doesn't want to talk about her record on reproductive freedom. And I'm like, oh, honey, you don't really get it, do you? So few people care about 
the abortion issue when we don't have a ban on abortion in New Hampshire. So if we're going to talk about misleading things, let's talk about how much you're misleading people there. And what people do care about is that butter is still $4 a pound and eggs are still over $3 a dozen and food is expensive. We were talking about that the other day and I said, I stand behind people in the grocery store line and I... I noticed, obviously, the price, you know, my, I used to run into Market Basket, pick up a couple things, and it would be 20 or 30 bucks. Now you go in, pick up a couple things, and it's $60. Yep. So you, you know, I'm not, look, I'm, I'm not, it's not killing on my personal budget, but I definitely notice it. But I am always like, holy cow, when there's somebody in front of me, and they're not getting like two grocery carts full of groceries. They've got a normal grocery cart full of groceries, and it rings up, and I'm like, Holy cow, that's $280. Yeah. Who yeah. the heck can pay $280 for groceries? So, you know, mm, you can talk about people care about their, they have no choice but to care about their pocket because they can't avoid it. You can't avoid the fact, and people want to focus on rents because then there can be some imaginary boogeyman out there. But the reality is it's your day in, day out life stuff. It's the fact that your food costs so much well, money. Well, it's that, but it's also because everyone is economically illiterate. So the thing everyone's talking about this week, right, is that Kamala's suggesting oh that they're going to put in price oh controls. Now, if you understand nothing about economics, you're like, that seems right. It must no. be corporate greed. And do you guys know corporations make about two to three percent right as as their profit and they employ everybody um and you know so when you hear corporate greed be like eh, i think i'm probably getting fleeced by some politician who, who benefits like right. from saying these words and we uh, press controls so they drive them, up the prices. <laughs> so they, they never reduce prices. So they call it price gouging in America, but they call it price controls in Russia. It's the same thing. It sounds communist here, and it sounds kind of like we're going against the man here. Same thing, yep. folks. Well, it's bad for the consumer. There are, she also, yes, I saw Kamala supporting this thing for unrealized capital gains tax. Okay, for the average illiterate <laughs> person, they're like, I don't even know what capital gains tax is, but use this scenario. You buy your house is worth $250,000 or $500,000 on Zillow. That's what Zillow thinks your house is worth. But you only paid $250,000. So how would you like to pay 25% tax on that $250,000? Unrealized, Unrealized capital gains. You, don't you actually, haven't made you didn't the money. You actually gain it, you just but we'd start like to get... charge you for yes. it. So, so there's, there's what the Democrats want. Number like. one thing you could do for yourself, folks, don't be economically illiterate. No. Watch this show. Go on YouTube. Google yep. Austrian economics. Find out how the monetary system works. Yep. And you, too, cannot be dumb. Yep. That's all we got for this week. We're getting the shutoff notice. So we will be back next week. Um, send us an email if you want. It's manchtalk at gmail.com. Bye, guys.